Hello, I welcome you all to TMF. I am Dr. Rajat Swami. In today's lecture, we will discuss about basics of acid-base disorder and buffering system of body. Acid-base disorder is common in ICU and important cause of morbidity and mortality in the patient. We determine the presence of acid or base disorder by looking at pH. If pH is more than 7.45, Disorder is basic disorder or the alkalosis and if pH is less than 7.35 then the disorder is acidic disorder, maybe respiratory or maybe metabolic. Two important fact is almost every body fluid is basic in nature while every cell of the body produces acid. That's why intracellular pH is around 6.9 to 7 while the extracellular pH or the body fluid pH is around 7.4. Since we cannot measure the intracellular pH, we take pH of body fluid as the surrogate of intracellular pH. When we talk about the normal pH range of body 7.35 to 7.45, we talk about the pH in the blood or the plasma. The pH which is compatible to life is 6.8 to 7.8 corresponding to the plasma concentration of H plus ion 160 nanomole to 16 nanomole. Acid and base are generated in pair. Acid cannot be generated without generation of the base. For example, we all know stomach parietal cell secrete the HCl and make stomach content acidic. pH of the concentrated HCl is 1.1 while that of stomach is around 2 to 3. When the parietal cells secrete acid in the stomach, it secrete bicarbonate on the opposite side of stomach toward the interstitium, then drain into venous blood. When you take sample of the gastric vein, you will found the pH more basic. Similarly, in nephron, we all know DCT cell or the CD cell excrete the acid. Urinary tubule pH is acidic, while that of interstitium of the kidney is basic. Similarly, in the RBC, when CO2 enter into the RBC, react with H2O, form carbonic acid, which dissociate into H plus and HCO3. H plus taken up by hemoglobin and HCO3 move out of cell, make the plasma alkaline and this H plus is taken up by hemoglobin histidine residue. That's why hemoglobin acts as the buffer. As we see in metastatic calcification, calcium salt love to deposit in the alkaline pH. That's why whenever there is hypercalcemia due to any reason, calcium salt deposit here around the distal tubule of the kidney in the interstitium known as nephrocalcinosis. Similarly, calcium salt deposit in the interstitium of the stomach in the metastatic calcification. So what is the source of the acid in the body? Every cell of the body produces acid in the form of the CO2 due to the oxidation of the carbohydrate, protein and fat. This CO2, since highly lipid soluble, can rapidly cross across the biological membrane. CO2 react with water, form carbonic acid. This carbonic acid dissociate into H plus and HCO3. Since the normal level of CO2 in the blood is 40 mm of Hg, with the solubility coefficient is 0 0.03. The normal dissolved CO2 is around 1.2 milliequivalent per liter. And the bicarbonate ion exists in the amount of 24 milliequivalent. That's why CO2 and bicarb exist in the ratio of 1 is to 20. For every molecule of the H2CO3, there is 6.8 thousand molecule of bicarbonate and 340 molecule of the carbon dioxide. Daily around 15,000 to 20,000 millimole of CO2 is generated and this is known as volatile acid. CO2 handling in body is done by lungs. Whenever there is increase in CO2 level, alveolar ventilation increase and CO2 level comes down. And in the event of decreased CO2 level, alveolar ventilation is decreased to an extent and PCO2 level come to the normal value. Body cells also generate the non-volatile acid. When we do severe exercise, lactate is generated. Generated lactate is cleared by the liver, but in the case of liver disorder, lactate level may rise. Oxidation of the sulfur-containing amino acid result in the production of sulfuric acid. This sulfur-containing amino acid are cysteine and methionine. 
oxidation of phospholipid give rise to the phosphoric acid non volatile acid cannot be excreted by lungs kidney excrete almost 100 milliequivalent fix or non volatile acid daily kidney can increase its excretion of acid up to 300 milliequivalent daily in case of the increased acid load in the body so the lung and kidney maintain the extra cellular ph within the normal narrow range that is 7.35 to 7.45 Which is correspond to almost 40 nanomole of nitrogen concentration plus minus. H plus ion don't exist freely. It combine with the water to form the hydronium ion. We write is as a H plus for the sake of convenience. Maintenance of the pH in this narrow normal range is necessary to perform the vital function of the body. H plus ion reach the active site of protein. and ionize the protein this protein are very essential to perform various important function in the body this protein include enzyme peptide hormone receptor ion channel transporter and various intermediary protein involved in the cellular communication machinery maintenance of the h plus ion or the ph is also necessary for the ionization of the various molecule which contribute to selective permeability of the cell membrane small molecule which are ionized are trapped or restricted to the cellular compartment fluctuation in the ph level also produce change in the ionized and non ionized portion of the molecule ph of the body also determine ionized and non ionized portion of the various molecule ionized portion restricted to the cellular compartment of the body for example phosphate is sequestered in the cell so with this discussion it is very clear that normal maintenance of the ph is of utmost importance ph is maintained within the normal limit by buffer of the body buffer are the substance which resist any change in the ph power of any buffer system measure in term of the buffer value buffer value is amount of the acid or the base that is added to 1 liter of the system to change its ph by 1 unit its unit is likes The buffering in the body is provided by chemical buffer, lungs, kidney, and to some extent by liver. Chemical buffer provide immediate buffering of the acid or the base. They are divided into extracellular buffer and intracellular buffer. Major component of extracellular buffer is bicarbonate ion, and that of intracellular buffer is phosphate and proteins. carbonic acid bicarbonate buffer system exist in equilibrium and it forms salt with the sodium or potassium concentrate of phosphate within the cell is 12 times of the concentration in the extracellular fluid apart from being a intracellular buffer phosphate also play an important role in forming component of the urinary buffer system this phosphate filtered in the urine and combine with the h plus ion which are secreted in the distal tubule to form the h2po4 not only phosphate ion combine with h plus ion but by removing h plus ion from the tubule they create gradient so the excretion of the h plus can be continued apart from the phosphate ammonia is another most important urinary buffer this is inducible buffer system when acid load in the body increase production of ammonia increase in the tubular cell when amount of acid decrease in the body tubular cell decrease production of the ammonia ammonia combined with h plus ion secreted by the tubular cell and excrete in the urine in form of ammonium salt with chloride or the other ion buffer are salt of weak acid or the weak base because they exist in the both form non ionized and the ionized form depending on pk of the buffer system relative concentration of ionized and non ionized form is determined best buffer have the pka equal to the body ph if the pk of the buffer system is equal to the ph of the body system then the ionized and non ionized form exist in equal amount bicarbonate buffer system which is the major extracellular buffer system of the body have the pka far less than body ph its pka is around 6.1 that's why very little bicarbonate exists in the non ionized form this is the reason why the salt or strong acid don't form the buffer system for example sodium chloride is the salt of strong acid they prefer to ionize and dissociate completely
so they will be unable to capture the proton on the hydroxyl ion even if they do so immediately that will dissociate it into the ionic form so the major buffer system of intracellular compartment is the phosphate and protein histidine moiety of the protein is responsible for the buffering capacity same histidine is responsible and impart the buffering capacity to the hemoglobin example of the intracellular buffering are rbc buffering and the bone buffering in the rbc at the level of tissue where co2 is produced co2 enter into the cell combined with h2o and in the presence of the carbonic anhydrase enzyme form the carbonic acid this carbonic anhydrase enzyme is very sensitive to acid or ph of the body in case of increased acid load activity of this enzyme increase and there is increased formation of the carbonic acid this carbonic acid dissociated into the bicarbonate ion and the h plus ion this bicarbonate ion thrown out of the cell and to maintain the electroneutrality of the cell chloride ion comes in this process known as chloride or the hamburger shift i am sure you are aware of it this h plus ion is trapped by the hemoglobin molecule histidine present in the globin chain of hemoglobin trap this h plus ion this whole process occur at the tissue level because there is increased production of the co2 and decrease ph this process also formed important part of co2 transport mechanism let's move to the bone buffering this part need little more attention in the bone calcium phosphate salt exist in two form one is readily available that is calcium phosphate dissolved in the interstitial fluid and other form which is not readily available is deposition of calcium phosphate crystal in the form of hydroxyapatite on the collagen framework of the bone if acidosis is temporary or during the initial phase of acidosis h plus ion are exchanged with sodium and potassium present in the bone S plus goes in and sodium and potassium comes out, resulting in increased level of potassium in the body during the acidosis. If acidosis continue to persist, it irritate the bone marrow, resulting in increased TLC count. It activate osteoblastic and osteoclastic system of bone. Osteoclast is derivative of the monocyte cell. It is multinucleated giant cell. which have many lysosome containing the lysosome enzyme and the proton pump upon activation this osteoclast attach to bone with the help of adhesin molecule and secrete more proton because this lysosomal enzyme and the osteoclast work best in the acidic environment of the bone this is one of the reason during the acidosis why this osteoclast system is activated now this osteoclast release its lysosomal content and cause destruction of the bone resulting in increased release of the calcium phosphate amino acid including hydroxyproline we take the piece of the bone here this part include the collagen framework in the collagen framework there are various amino acid including the hydroxyproline and calcium phosphate salt deposit in the form of hydroxyapatite in collagen framework when this collagen is cleaved by the enzyme of the osteoclast resulting in the breakage of collagen fiber and release of calcium phosphate various amino acid including the hydroxyproline this hydroxyproline is filtered in the kidney and excreted into the urine so the increased level of hydroxyproline is the marker of the bone destruction and as i told you acidic environment favor the bone destruction by activation of the osteoblastic osteoclastic system and alkalemia favor the bone deposition or the calcium phosphate deposition remember alp is increased in case of bone formation activity although there may be other reason of raise alp so if you find the patient with the normal alp level and increase hydroxyproline level in the urine bone destruction is the ongoing process when you come across the patient with raised alp level and no hydroxyproline in urine this indicate bone formation or some liver pathology or some other pathology where the alp level is increased when alp level and hydroxyproline level both are increased that means bone destruction and bone formation both are occurring simultaneously bone provide large reservoir of the base 
contain almost 25,000 mq of the alkali. Also, five sixths of the body CO2 reside in the bone in the form of carbonate and bicarbonate. So the bone contains large pool of CO2 and alkali. 60% of the buffering capacity provided by the intracellular buffer and 40% of the buffering capacity provided by extracellular buffer. In the case of respiratory acidosis or the alkylosis, 97 to 99% of the buffering provided by the intracellular buffer. While in case of metabolic acidosis, 40% of the buffering capacity provided by the extracellular buffer and in case of metabolic alkylosis, 70% of the buffering provided by the extracellular compartment. The bicarbonate form the major component of the extracellular buffer. Phosphate and protein form major component of the intracellular buffer. Bicarbonate and hemoglobin are major buffer of the blood. Phosphate and ammonia are the major buffer of the urine. Second buffer system is lungs. In case of metabolic acidosis, lung increase the ventilation, decrease the CO2 level and try to resist change in the pH. Similarly, in case of metabolic alkalosis, lung decrease the ventilation, try to increase the CO2 level and resist change in the pH. It takes few minutes to hours to develop the full buffering effect of the lung. Third buffer system is kidney. Kidney is the major regulator for the non-volatile acid. Kidney excretes almost 100 milliequivalent non-volatile acid daily and can enhance its excretion of non-volatile acid up to 300 milliequivalent. Kidney reabsorb bicarbonate and excrete H+. In case of the respiratory acidosis, kidney adjust is bicarbonate reabsorption in the PCT and in case of respiratory alkalosis, kidney excrete more bicarbonate ion in the urine. It takes few days to reach its maximum buffering capacity. Liver also play a role in some buffering. Almost 1500 millimole of lactate is generated daily. Liver convert this lactate to the glucose by Cori cycle. Also lactate is used by some peripheral tissue for the metabolism and energy production. Liver also convert citrate, acetate and lactate to the bicarbonate. Amino acid produced during the protein catabolism in the liver also provides some buffering capacity since the amino acid contain an N-terminal, amino terminal and carboxyl terminal. This both N and C terminal provide buffering capacity. Let's see the time frame of the buffering mechanism. After change in the pH, immediate buffering is provided by the physiochemical buffer. Response is almost immediate, followed by extracellular buffer system. Respiratory compensation takes place, which takes few minutes to several hours. Within two to four hours, intracellular buffer system get activated, and last but not the least, renal system come into play to resist change in the pH. This is all for today's lecture. In next lecture, we will discuss about metabolic acidosis and anion gap.